Okay, this is the last video for 1984. We'll finish up uh, talking about the book, answer some questions, and then if you want to do the <clears throat> essay for more points, you can. Uh, otherwise, that is about it for the year. Um, I might put out a survey and ask you guys to, uh, to do that. Just give me some feedback on uh, the class and specifically the last you know few months um we may have to do this again next year so i do want some feedback just to ask you um so that i know what you thought of you know the different activities and that kind of thing but okay let's get into the book we're just going to get through the last six chapters try to go through it quickly just hit the main points uh so we start off with winston in prison um you know the mystery of love we kind of get acclimated to what's going on in there a lot of different people a lot of different things going on but one of the main things that you see over and over is just how much control um you know whoever's in charge there has over the uh you know the um party prisoners um and there aren't necessarily even a lot of guards around they don't need that right um because well one there's telescreens over there everywhere and they're they're constantly shouting at you and telling you what to do so you can't have your hands in your pocket you can't cover your face um they're just always controlling you in that way also if you try to help anyone uh you get punished so you got the guy with no chin who's trying to give a piece of bread to someone who's starving and he gets sent to room 101. um so they, they can see everything you do. But if you try to help other people, um, then you get into a huge amount of trouble. In fact, room 101 is one of the biggest threats. It's the biggest way to control people is that it seems like people will do anything. The guy, as he's getting taken away to room 101, he's screaming, I'll do anything, you know, uh, to not go there. So that's a huge uh, way that they control people. And then, you know, they do show up occasionally with a truncheon, which is just a baton, and they, you know, beat you. Uh, and in the end of the first chapter, it's uh, O'Brien shows up, and Winston's like, oh, they got you too. And it turns out, no, O'Brien's been in charge of the whole thing. And you probably saw this coming just because O'Brien was always, he never finished sentences. He always let you finish the sentence. He always let you incriminate yourself. So it kind of, you could see that he was, he might've been doing that. Um, it's also interesting to see in 3.1, who's there. Uh, you got Ampleforth, who was a poet, and he couldn't find any other word to rhyme with God or then God that would fit in the poem. So he put God in a poem and he got thrown in there. So it kind of shows you how you get thrown in there for anything. Parsons, the guy who, Winston said would never end up in prison. He's there because he had a, he was yelling something out in his dream. So this is something he, he didn't even have control over. It was in his subconscious. He was yelling something out and his daughter turned him in because his kids are scary. Um, and so, you know, anyone can end up there, end up there for any reason. Right? All right. So that kind of just gets us acclimated with the prison. Then we start getting into the torture scenes and they're pretty archetypal. Like this is pretty much what you think of when you think of torture, at least in modern day. Uh, you see this in all the like spy movies when people get tortured. But you know, the whole idea of like, I don't even know what time it is. I mean, there's no windows. It's totally dark in there. They don't know what time it is. They don't know what time of year it is. They don't know, it. you know, it just, there's confusion all around. I don't know where I am, what's going on. Uh, beatings all the time interrogations all the time this is what you see you know in in movies where there's torture um you know with the bright light and the different questions and then the you know now the pain machine that's not that that's too specific to be an archetype but the idea of you know asking you a question and then hitting you with some pain and asking you a question, hitting with you with pain until it's this repetitive thing that goes on the same questions over and over. Um, and then hitting you with pain until you give them what they want. Right. Uh, 
And then as far as the brainwashing goes, you know, this idea that people always say, it's not a matter of um, if you'll crack under torture, it's a matter of when, how long it'll last, because generally humans just can't endure that kind of thing for that long. At some point you're going to crack. And in at the end of chapter two, Winston's like believing everything they tell him um, in, in stuff that he never believed before. So it's working. Right. Um, and then another interesting thing in this chapter is, you know, Winston, they get into a conversation about why, why they go to all these lengths. Like, why don't they just shoot people in the head? They do eventually. But why do all this? And so it says, we do not merely destroy our enemies. We change them. It is intolerable for us to us that an erroneous thought should exist anywhere in the world. It's not enough to wipe out the enemy because if you do that, There'll be more, but if you can brainwash them and change them, then they they meld into the society, and then you could take them out whenever you want, right? But they want the entirety of the society to be completely brainwashed and believe everything they say, and if they don't, they want to cure them and fix them until they do, and then at their own pleasure, you know, they'll wipe you out for, uh, you know, for treason or whatever it is. Um, but it's not enough to just get rid of the enemy. They, they, it has to be that everyone on the planet believes everything they say, which that's a scary thought, right? And then at the end, he says, okay, I'll answer some of your questions. Of course, the first thing Winston asks about is Julia and <clears throat> whether or not you want to believe him. By the end of the book, you believe him because uh, of what happens at the end. But he said, when, or, um, O'Brien says that she betrayed you instantly. Like she, it was very easy to cr get her to crack, right? Um, he asks about brotherhood. He says, doesn't exist. He says, you don't exist, right? He asks about room 101. He says, everyone knows what's in room 101, which is kind of true. Once we find out what room 101 is, then yeah, you already know what it's going to be, right? But we'll get to that. Uh, okay. So we get to chapter 3.3. Um, we're getting into more of these deeper conversations, which are kind of interesting. And I have a couple quotes here that I tried to think of some something to write down, but I was like, ah, these quotes speak better than anything I can say. So he's I, they're getting to the question of why, right? Winston, why do you think that we're so keen on having power? And he says, oh, for the better good, right? Isn't that what everyone says? Like the reason your parents are so strict is because it's better for you, right? The reason your teacher is so strict, you're going to help learn in bed, right? It's all for your benefit. And he's like, no, <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? We're not, we're not doing all this for your benefit. Uh, and, you know, he's zapping them with the pain machine. <laughs> um he says, the object of persecution is persecution. The reason we're persecuting you is to persecute you, right? It's not for anyone's better good. It's not to get any information. It's not for, we just want to persecute you, right? The object of torture is torture. There's no reason to torture you but to torture you. We're doing this for the plain fact that it's torture. The object of power is power. We want power to get power. Right. We want power over you, not because we think it's better for you, but because the object of power is power. It's to gain more power. We want power over you. Why? For power. <laughs> right. There's no, right. And then he said and then he kind of paints a picture. And this has to do with the power of what things are going to be like in the future. There will be no loyalty except loyalty towards the party. There will be no love except love of Big Brother. There will be no laughter except the laugh of triumph over a defeated enemy. There will be no art, no literature, no science. There will be no curiosity, no enjoyment of the process of life. All competing pleasures will be destroyed. But always, right, we, we'll get rid of everything except for one thing. There will be the intoxication of power. Constantly increasing and constantly growing subtler. You don't even you won't even know that that's what it is. Always at every moment there will be the thrill of victory. So that you know this brainwashing of oh we've destroyed uh, I don't know Eurasia or whatever the different Asians are and the enemy and people will feel good about that right. Uh, the sensation of trampling an enemy who is helpless. 
If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever, right? Like there's always just this oppression that's happening. This, you know, they're they're pushing you down. They're stamping out humanness. It's always crushing it, right? So that's something you write an essay about. You know, are we heading in that direction? Do you think that um, that all of a sudden, you know, all the emotions that we normally have are getting stamped out and the only thing we care about is power over each other and I'm right and you're wrong, you know, kind of thing. Is that why that seems to be all people want to do is just one up everybody else and show that they're right and you're wrong. So I don't know. You tell me. <clears throat> and then he says, you know, Winston and Winston's like, no, I don't believe it. it's not true. It's not going to happen. And he's like, you know, you're the last human. <laughs> you're the last man standing here i want you to get up and let me show you so he has him look in the mirror and he's just oh he's, he just looks horrible he's super skinny his teeth are falling out he just barely looks alive he's like really you want to be a human because this is what humans look like of course this is all part of the manipulation right winston looks like this not because he's human but because of what they've done to him but that's the idea he's like oh you like being a human why don't you become one of us uh, if you're a human, this is what you look like. This is what, you know. And also, you think you're so much mightier than us. Here, let me play something back to you that you said in my house. And he, you know, plays the, the audio where he said, where Winston had said he would throw sulfuric acid in the child's face. And he's like, really? You're better than us? This is what humans are like. So, and, and the only thing that Winston can kind of hold on to, he says, yeah, but I haven't betrayed Julia yet and O'Brien's like yeah that's true just wait he doesn't say just wait but yeah uh all right chapter 3.4 so you know th this has been going on for a long time uh things are changing Winston is physically much better his ulcer is going down he's um you know, keeps to himself. He, and when I say better, I mean, he's basically acting more the way Big Brother wants him to. Um, so he gets tortured less and, you know, he keeps to himself and uh, he just does what he's supposed to do. Um, he's also continually trying to change his brain to make sure he thinks and believes everything that Big Brother tells him. So, he, you know, he's, he's consciously doing that. Whenever there's a, sto uh, a thought in his mind, that shouldn't be there. You know, he, they call it crime stop. He stops and pushes it out. Right now there are two exceptions to this. There are two things that he's not giving up. Uh, one is that he still loves Julia. He doesn't want to betray her. In fact, remember that this is one of the things that was said, uh, when Julia and Winston were talking before they got caught and he said, well, they can't make us betray each other. Um, apparently julia has but he's like as long as they can't change our brain and they can't make us think um think things or betray each other then we're fine and so he still has his hatred for big brother in fact he says you know what they're gonna shoot me in the head and if i can think in my brain that i hate big brother right before they shoot me then i win right that that, that means that they were never able to get me um, which brings us to chapter 3.5, which is, you know, room 101. We finally, it has been all this anticipation and build up and like, ooh, what's in there? Uh, and room 101 is going to be where those two last things that Winston is holding on to disappear, right? So we find out that room 101 is where everyone faces their biggest fear. Like everyone has a fear, right? It doesn't matter what it is. They happen to choose rats, which don't bother me. So this doesn't affect me that much. But I think the idea is try to think about what your biggest fear is and how they could threaten or blackmail you with that fear. So if it's drowning, you know, they put you in a room with the water starting to, to go up and then would you do anything just not to drown? You know, whatever it is. For, and we knew this early on, Winston hates rats. That's why they had that scene where the rat comes out and he's like, oh, I hate him, right? So they put this mask on him and the, basically it would give 
So they've got the chamber here with the rats in them. And then there's an empty chamber here, but they're going to open the two chambers, connect them so that that rats can basically eat its face, right? Uh, oh, I think there's another door because they let the rats in and so they're right next to his face and they can feel their whiskers and stuff. And they say, okay, we're going to open this door unless you have someone else that, you know, gets in between you and the rats. So, you know, he says, do it to Julia, tear her face off, strip her to the bones, not me, Julia. So basically through this fear they get him to betray her. They get him to like give her up. And once he does that, once they get into his brain and they get him <clears throat> to do the one thing that he wouldn't do, they've got him, right? He, he's, he's like, well, I mean, it doesn't explain. It goes from this to like his brain's already been washed. It's done. Um, so there's a little bit of a jump in faith there, like a leap in faith. But, you know, he was holding on to that and it was pretty easy for them to just, and, 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 he, and he truly believes this. He's like, no, I don't care about her anymore. You know, you can have her as long as you don't let the rats eat my face. So that's how they get you. They, you know, the one last thing that you're holding on to that you don't want to happen, they threaten you with the biggest fear that you have. And then you give it up. And now you're completely theirs, right? Which brings us to the final chapter. It kind of wraps things up. Winston's been cured. I should have put this in quotation marks, but you know, it is as much as the party wants to cure people. So he, the first thing we see is he's at the Chestnut Tree Cafe, and this should seem familiar, right? Uh, this is where Aronson and Rutherford and all of them, you know, they were. They used to hang out there. Um, and the same exact thing happened to them, right? They got taken and then they were released and all of a sudden they were great party members. And then they got shot in the head. However, they disappeared. But you know. And he's playing chess with himself. And it's interesting, right? This whole chess thing, I always have seen it as a metaphor. You know, you can tell me I'm reading into it too much, but it's black versus white. He says white always wins. And then all of a sudden there's an announcement that says, oh, there's a big victory in Africa. So a little bit of suggestion of racism that the party, you know, is, is like white always wins and we just defeated, you know, African people. Interesting. Okay. But also, you know, this whole thing in uh, the mystery of love has been kind of a chess, like a mind chess game um, between O'Brien and Winston. But at this point, he's playing chess with himself. It's It's like... And, and the last thing it says is he had one victory over himself. So he's winning this chess game. He's this mind game that he's playing with himself in order to stay cured. Uh, right. Um, and, and the, the deck is stacked like against him. It's, you know, it's impossible to win this game. And he, in, in fact, he's so cured. He's so brainwashed that he believes that two plus two equals five. And if you'll remember, um, this is the, this is what he wrote in his journal early, early, early in the book. Um, he said, if if the party can convince you that two plus two equals five, then they can convince you of anything, right? Um, and this is one of the, you know, you could buy shirts that say two plus two equals five. It basically means that the government has like total control over us, right? Uh, there's a scene where he meets up with Julia just to show us that there's absolutely nothing between them, right? That you know, he puts his hand on her hip and it doesn't matter at all. It's just a gesture and they hate each other and they can't wait to get away. Can't wait to get back to his gin, you know. Uh, talks about how he has a memory of his mother and he pushes it out because that's a false memory, right? It's fake, fake news. They brainwashed him to just believe only what the, um, what the party tells him. There's the announcement about the victory in Africa. He feels comforted by that, like genuinely. So this isn't like... He's not faking it. He's genuinely, completely brainwashed and has become a perfect party member and they got him. And, you know, you might say like, wow, that's so depressing. Like, why would you, and people, some people hate sad endings, right? Some people hate, um, you know, if it's not that pretty, you want to feel good going out of the, coming out of the theater or finish reading your book. I would argue that 
if it if it ended with a happy ending or any bit of hope, then it it wouldn't have gotten its point across. Like the whole point of the book is that this is what's going to happen. If they leave with hope, then it leaves us with, oh no, this won't happen. It's fine. But but Orwell is trying to tell us, like, no, this is on its way. It's going to happen. There's no hope. It's not possible to defeat. And he wants to give us some panic. And he wants us to fight against it because of that. And you're like, well, if there's no hope, why would we fight against it? Well, there's no hope in the book. People are always going to have hope, right? Um, but the final sentence is just the most hopeless, like, complete domination over you know humankind that you can come up with he had won a victory over himself as if you know it's him doing it to himself you know he's playing that chess game with himself when we know it's really big brother has done it but the last sentence he loved big brother like it's not that he convinced himself that he actually loves big brother like there's that's it game over <laughs> right like they completely want he doesn't just go along with it he doesn't like begrudge them and like oh i hate this but i'm going to be loyal to you no no no. he literally loves big brother like that is a complete victory it's not just we've defeated you it's you are now our, our minions <laughs> you are now like a robot in our control uh, right, we could do whatever we want with you. We could shoot you in the head, or we can keep you around so you can work for us and be a perfect, you know, citizen for us. Oh man, I don't know. I find it pretty powerful stuff. I always get paranoid when I read this book. I always, you know, but okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for going through all these, whether it was just for the points or you're actually interested. If you read. I'm impressed. <laughs> I love this book. I think it's fantastic. If, you know, later on in your life, if you actually have the urging to read and you remember back, oh, that book that Mr. Kramer told me about, but I never read, sounded kind of interesting. Maybe I'll go back and read that. Um, that would be awesome. But anyway, all right. Uh, there'll be at least one more announcement before, uh, before we call it, you know, the end. I'm going to uh, try to get everything graded by Friday so you can decide if you want to do the essay, which I already put out a video for that. Um, that needs to be done, I think, by next Wednesday <laughs> um, so I can get grades finalized and all that. Uh, all right. You made it. You did it. I'll see you soon.